so I'm a bit of an imposter here. Um, uh, uh, so this project is uh, linked to the fact that uh, in 2008 and 19, so basically in the last two years, uh, uh, Mike has been, sorry, I'll try to stay here so I can move from the computer to the screen. Okay, so basically Mike was in Sheffield for two years as part of a Marie Curie Actions uh, project. And, uh, and we had this broader project on the, on the, the study of long-term developments in capital management and mobility in the Netherlands from the Aaron Age to the Roman period. So this was a broader project and largely was a zoarchaeological project, but I will focus on our isotopic results here because obviously the theme of the session. Uh, why cattle? Why the focus on cattle is the main species in the Netherlands in both periods, and therefore that the, pro the opportunity to provide us with the largest possible sample. Um, um, there is evidence that obviously we weren't operating in a vacuum. Obviously, we have evidence uh, from previous archaeological work that has been done before. There are changes between the Iron Age and the Roman period, as you won't be surprised to hear. Uh, but obviously, we also wanted to know about what was happening in the Iron Age before the Roman period. Also, the other questions was, uh, what is the evidence that we have for cattle mobility and, uh, and about um, uh, herd management? Obviously, a lot of the work of herd management is based on geological data that I won't be able to present now, uh, but it's part of the project. But of course, the mobility is also part of the story. And uh, talking about mobility, um, what do we know? Well, we know from the study of the material culture uh, that uh, actually in this period there were extensive trade networks. And when I say in this period, I mean not just in the Roman period, but also in the, in, uh, in the Iron Age. And uh, you will hear about this more in a minute. Um, and uh, this movement of people has, documented, has been documented historically and also archaeologically so. But uh, we actually don't know much about the livestock, and this is why we want to contribute to this question by looking at the livestock. Obviously, we are mainly interested in the livestock as a proxy to understand human mobility and human contact. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, there is a size increase in cattle in the Roman period that is well documented, like in other areas of the Roman Empire, and one of the suggestions is that this is also associated with mobility because of the introduction of animals uh, that uh, from elsewhere that led to a size increase, you know, through interbreeding. Okay, uh, the uh, isotopic analysis that uh, we have done is uh, largely based on strontium, although you will hear in a minute a little bit more about a couple of other isotopes. And it's key that we had this collaboration, a long-standing collaboration with Jane Evans at the NERC lab in Keyworth. And Jane really uh, is integral part of this project that she will play an important role in the, in the publication. We have, um, as a, an opportunity to understand our strontium data, uh, it was very lucky that uh, Kurt published this kind of map of uh, the, what is now um, generally known as isoscapes for the strontium. This is for the Netherlands that obviously helps us in our interpretation. We worked on two sites. One is Houghton Castellum, which is a rural settlement uh, which spans uh, from uh, the Middle Iron Age to the Roman period. And from there, we actually sampled 40 cattle teeth, and in particular, we targeted the lower um, trees. And the other side, sorry, just to say, Alton is here, okay, just in the middle of the Netherlands. Well, Erlen, which is a Roman vicus, is right in the south of the Netherlands here. Uh, this is a much more tightly dated site, it's only Roman, first century AD, and, and uh, we had a much smaller sample there. We could only sample five cattle teeth, which is the reason why we decided to stretch out and do a little bit of the other species too. Okay, so Alton is, uh, is uh, 
there is a little bit of an habitation here, which is Roman a settlement, but most of what we know comes from a waterlogged channel, and uh, and uh, where amazing uh, there is amazing preservation, and uh, among other things, a fish trap, a canoe, part of a bridge were found. So this is quite a remarkable site with excellent organic remains because of waterlogging. Of course, and there is continuity of occupation from the mid Iron Age to the mid Roman period. And uh, as you can see here, a large sample size for animal bones, which allowed us to take quite a few samples for uh, isotopic analysis. Okay, so let's come to the results that we have from the strontium. Uh, okay, basically, this is out and, and this is the isoscapes in which it sits which you can see is very generic in the Netherlands because lots of areas have this kind of strontium signature. So if you look at the samples and our values, you will see that there are a lot of them which are actually consistent with that area, which means that they are consistent with local, uh, with lo with local animals, but uh, this uh, should not underestimate the possibility that actually they are coming from other areas which have a similar signature. But that we, we can't prove that they are from elsewhere. They may well be local, but they can also not be local. Okay, perhaps uh, more promisingly, uh, we have uh, some other uh, specimens that do come uh, from other areas. And uh, these two specimens are, are consistent with the isoscapes uh, D and E, which would be this yellow area here and the orange area here. And of course, it goes without saying that uh, they could come from outside the Netherlands too. Okay, so we have uh, some other, we have some introduction. And there is another specimen here that is consistent with either E or F. So we added this area over here, but not to the, the area where Alton sits. And then we have three specimens which have much higher strontium values. And here you see the question marks because these are values that are not reflected in, uh, in the map of the Netherlands. So therefore, they could come either from elsewhere or there are some areas where there is actually a little bit of a gap and uh, there has been some work, although it hasn't been mapped, that shows that uh, this boulder clay area here may have uh, isotopic values which are consistent with this. So basically these three specimens either come from elsewhere, as the arrows show, or perhaps from this area that is not mapped. Okay, uh, just a... Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, I have now been talking about the Iron Age and the Roman period as they were together, but obviously we have a chronology that you can see here. And just uh, to make a long story short, I'm just dividing it between the Iron Age and the Roman period. And the remarkable things uh, that you can see here is that most of the specimens that come from elsewhere, they are actually from the Iron Age, which is Maybe a little bit of a surprise is the Roman period and you have only one specimen which definitely comes from elsewhere. So for the Iron Age, we have at least three other regions involved from which the cattle were coming and for the Roman period, only one. Okay. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that you can see we have specifically labeled the, these two specimens, okay? Uh, with the very high strontium values. And the reason why we did that is for these two specimens, we also done some oxygen and carbon uh, uh, analysis. And while one is uh, together with others, is plots with the others, and uh, is not uh, that different in terms of carbon and oxygen, one is really stands out as very different. So, uh, emphasizing further the fact that, that this is likely to be an exogenous specimen coming from elsewhere. Okay. Uh, and in fact, it is, uh, it, the low carbon value could indicate a specimen coming from an area of dense forest. 
Now, the trade network for art and was big on the basis of the material culture from pottery, metal, and stone. We know that there were, in the Iron Age, contacts through lots of places. Therefore, perhaps it's not surprising that we get also livestock coming from elsewhere in the Iron Age. And, um, and uh, you know, the question here refers to that particular specimen, which has strong, very strong, high strontium values, high oxygen, low carbon, and maybe we should look for an area which has this characteristic to provide more detail. In terms of the site, uh, so we could conclude that, that uh, as I say, that the mobility in the Iron Age indicates that, that there is livestock coming from three different regions. Okay, uh, on uh, uh, the material culture um, in, in the Iron Age uh, burials uh, points out uh, to links uh, with lots of areas in the northern Netherlands, in France, in Germany. And indeed, the strontium analysis shows that some of the animals came from quite a long distance. As you can see, at least 100 kilometers away. Okay, the one thing aspect which is very interesting, the low mobility towards Alton in the Roman period. But if you consider that Alton is actually um, a, a, a rural site, which I didn't say at the beginning, but it's a rural site, so it's a site uh, which has, is likely to have uh, a kind of uh, producer uh, element uh, which is greater than the consumer element. So it's quite likely that in the Roman period, when it was a rural site, actually, these uh, people were actually exporting animals and these were taken elsewhere. Okay. And this is why we don't have so much evidence of animals coming in. It's more a question of animals going out. Erlen is, uh, is, uh, is really famous for its bathhouse. You can see a photograph here. And, uh, and the analysis, uh, the bones of bones come mainly from an old excavation. I'll try to go a little bit quicker here. And, uh, and here we have a much smaller sample size. And uh, what, what we see here is, uh, okay, this is uh, the local signature, which is here. It's a, this is a quite small area in the Netherlands. Okay, you can see that uh, there are some specimens that are consistent with this, but we have a number of other specimens that don't belong to any of the isoscapes known for the ne Netherlands. So they must have come from elsewhere. And you can see one here, okay? So one region here, we can identify another here, and a very high value here. So this must have all come from elsewhere. And if we uh, try, so at least three regions involved, like for Alton, okay? And then uh, you can see that as far as, uh, this is the, these are the cattle specimens, only five, you can see not, none of the cattle, or none of the cattle are, are consistent with the local, uh, signature, which obviously, considering a small sample size, it doesn't mean that they didn't have local cattle, but obviously quite a few must have come from elsewhere. The pigs, only two samples, they could have both been uh, local, and we ship, we have at least two or the five specimens that come from elsewhere. It's probably just one area that is recorded. So here, uh, we, we do have life at Alton and probably in the Iron Age, but here we're talking about the Roman period, we do have a lot of evidence which is consistent once again with a trade network that we know from the material culture or lots of contacts with a broader area. Okay, so what can we see about Erlen? Um, so mobility of cattle, from three different regions, as this one. I can't see. Can you see it? Still? No, I can't see it. Yeah, maybe the battery is gone. Never mind. Okay, so it comes from three different regions. The sheep goat, we know evidence from one region. Of course, if we had had a larger sample, probably more regions would have been involved. One thing that we know from the archaeology, most of the cattle are old. So these cattle are coming in, and they are probably cattle that were used for farming, and then at the end of their life were taken towards the site. And also, the introduction of so much uh, 
material, you know, stone, pottery from elsewhere, may also mean that uh, the cattle were used for transport towards the city and eventually slaughtered there. Okay? And uh, we have seen that uh, there are also patio sheep, goats and pigs, which are consistent with the local signature, so they could have been kept locally. Okay, so try to make some kind of um, final considerations about this. Okay, I think um, one thing that one consideration that uh, I think it could be potentially interesting is that we see, we have seen one side, Iron Age to Roman, in the Roman period there is very little evidence of animals imported. And then we have seen another site, okay, it's a small sample, but a lot of evidence of importation. So obviously we have to be careful here to generalize. Different Roman sites provide different evidence, and that's probably related to the different function. One is a rural site, which is largely a producer's, uh, producer's site. The other is probably a site which is with a bathhouse and all that is probably more oriented towards consumption and you expect the more stuff coming in. Um, now, the other thing which I found is very interesting uh, is, uh, is that uh, although we do expect that in terms of, of uh, trade, uh, the extent uh, and the energy of the trade probably increased from the Iron Age to the Roman period, but we've seen this is not necessarily reflected, yes, Okay, I'm, I'm finished. Uh, it's not necessarily reflected in, uh, in, uh, in the evidence uh, that we are from Alton. And uh, uh, for me, this was interesting in comparison to the evidence that, for instance, the project Sylvia and I, put together with Claudio Menichi, had in England, where we saw this clear increase in mobility from the Iron Age to the Roman period, we have to be careful not to generalize because we can see here that other scenarios are possible. Um, and also the other thing is that what we have to be careful about, as I mentioned before, is a lack of indication of movement in the in sense of imported animals. Doesn't mean the movement didn't occur, but in some cases it is possible that the movement was out, out of the site rather than towards the site. So we should be careful not to, to use the strontium evidence as a simple indication of mobility. Okay, many thanks to Maura and Sylvia for organizing this. Obviously, Jane Evans who had an important role in the project. And uh, I'm particularly keen in uh, remembering the Marie Curie actions because being based in Britain may be the last time that I have the opportunity to say that. Okay. Thank you.